Hi there. Welcome back to this channel. In this video, we are going to be proving the derivative of inverse trig functions. Uh, not necessarily like proving, I'll just be showing you how derivative of inverse functions works, inverse trig functions in specificity. So for example, <clears throat> we have that y is given to be the sine inverse of x. If you are given a question like this, now, the idea is that you already know what it should stand for, the, what the derivative should stand for. But what I want to do in this video is how we, are, we actually came about those der derivatives. So follow me. Now, if I have y is equal to sine inverse of x, recall in your basic math, if I said um, theta was, if I said what was, if I said to find sine theta, to find theta, what I will do is, to take the sine inverse of whatever you have here, isn't it? That theta will be equal to the sine inverse of whatever you have here, right? So it therefore means that this y is actually an angle, while this guy is um, an ordinary number. Is that okay? So as it is here, it means that what we started with was actually sine y to give us x. So to find this y angle, then we need to take the inverse of x, all right? So now, it means that if we start with this, recall from Sokatua that sine theta or sine x, in this case, sine y or sine whatever, is equal to opposite over, um, over hypotenuse. So it therefore means that our x is our opposite, then since it's over one, it means that one is the hypotenuse. So if we have our triangle this way, it means that this y is our angle, correct? Then this one, according to this rule, will be the hypotenuse. Then x will be the opposite, right? So the face, the place where the, the side of this angle is facing is the opposite. So this will be our opposite. So I recall from Pythagorean, um, Pythagoras theorem that a squared is equal to o squared plus a squared, meaning that a squared, which is just same squared, is equal to h squared, in this case, one squared minus O will come here minus O squared, which is X squared. So that A squared is equal to the square root of one. One squared is one minus X squared. So we are good with this here. All right, so at this point here, we'll put one minus X squared. So let's further um, go with this guy. Now, if we have sine X, I mean sine Y to be equal to X, we can from here do, do, differentiate, differentiate Y. So we differentiate sine Y specifically, if you take the derivative of y, remember that you must add, if it's the first derivative, you must have, add the y dx. So and sine, sine of an angle, the derivative of sine of an angle is cos of that angle, right? So we say that d sine y dx is equal to cos y. Is that okay? And the derivative and the der which is equal to the derivative of x dx. So the derivative of x dx cos y will give us one, is that okay? All right. So it therefore means that, okay, I said that we are going to add, when we differentiate y, we are going to add dy dx. So it means that here is cos y dy dx. So what we have is actually cos y cos y dy dx. Is that okay? When you differentiate y, remember you must add dy dx. Is equal to one. Then we differentiate x, all right? So from here, we can find dy dx now. So that dy dx becomes, if we divide both sides by cos y, we'll get our dy dx, right? All right, so dy dx is equal to one over cos y. All right, so from here, um, we have one about cos y. So what is cos y? Remember that cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. And what is our adjacent in this case? Our adjacent, adjacent rather, adjacent, is one minus, square root of one minus, that is square root of one minus x squared over hypotenuse. What is our hypotenuse? Which is one, right? So we have one. So um, that's cos y, cos y is equal to this, all right? So that cos y, therefore, cos y, therefore, will be this over one, will be this, right? 
just that adjacent itself. All right, so that dy dx, we substitute that into this equation, one over square root of one minus x squared. All right, so and that is the, um, that is the derivative of the sine inverse of x. And so whenever you see a question that asks you to take the, the arc sign of a particular function, know that you are always going to arrive at something similar to this. Now, in further videos, I'm going to show us how there's a trick, there's a formula or like a trick that we use to um, get our answer quickly. So, but we must first master this. And that formula is actually derived from this. So, but the purpose of this video is just to show you how it is being gotten. So, let me prove one more. You are going to prove one and show me in the comment section. All right. Um, let me prove the derivative of cos inverse of x, for example. Using the same principle, it means that our y is the angle. So, we have cos y is equal to x, isn't it? So, if we de take the, then take the derivative of cos y, we'll know that cos y, cos d cos y dx will give us minus sine y times dy dx. I told you that when you differentiate y, you must add dx, dy dx. So is equal to differentiate this, you have one. All right, so that dy dx therefore is equal to one over minus sine y, all right? And you know that sine is equal to sine y. If we have cos y to be this from here, if we have cos y to be equal to x, it means that, and you know that cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it means that this is our adjacent and our hypotenuse is one, isn't it? So it means that following our right angle triangle, it means that this guy, our angle is y, our adjacent is x, and this guy is one. So we are looking for the opposite. So that opposite will be equal to the square root of Opposite to be the square root of hypotenuse, which is 1 squared, minus adjacent squared, which is x squared. So that becomes opposite to be equal to square root of 1 minus x squared. All right. So it means that if you want to find sine y from here, sine y therefore means that we have opposite, which is now this, square root of 1 minus x squared over hypotenuse, which is 1. All right. So since we have the inverse of that, it means that dy dx is equal to 1 over negative 1 minus x squared. So our answer is minus 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, so you see, it's very similar to sine x, only that it is the negative. All right, so derivative of arc sine is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. And derivative of arc cos is just the negative of that. Is that OK? Now, um, a, a, um, just as a bonus tip, another way to derive this is from here, you know that the y dx we said was 1 over cos y, yeah? So using trig identities, you know that sine squared y, using y in this case, plus cos squared y will give us what? Uh, 1, good. <laughs> so, so cos squared y, will be equal to 1 minus sine squared y. Therefore, cos y will be equal to the square root of 1 minus 1 minus sine squared y. So you see, it looks like it, right? So therefore, we can, do, we can replace, we can substitute this guy for cos y so that dy dx will therefore be equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus sine, sine squared y. And what is sine y from the beginning? We said it was x, right? So sine squared y will not what x squared. So dy dx is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. So you see, that's another way to prove it. All right. So if you did gain value, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with your friend. And um, I'm also, um, just share, 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 and subscribe to the channel. God bless you. See you in the next video.